Well, I, I don't really consider it my role to be telling people what my faith is or telling the doctrines of my church. They could probably go to my church and they go to the website or Wikipedia or anything they'd like to learn more about it. Basically, my faith is like other faiths in that I believe in God. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Mitt Romney is descended from a family rich in Mormon tradition and one which can trace its lineage to a Mormon apostle of the early 1800s. Romney has served in leadership posts in the church, and he even helped fund the building of a temple in suburban Boston. Now that Romney is a candidate for the presidency, he finds himself in a position of fielding questions about his faith from a public largely unfamiliar with the religion. I think fundamentally, Americans want a person of faith, like me, to lead the country. They don't choose their elected officials based on what church they go to. They want somebody who shares their values. And the values I have, you can see in my family and in my marriage, in my relationships with, uh, with that family, and those values are as American as you'll find anywhere. Whether fair or not, scholars say that Romney will continue to face questions about his faith throughout the campaign. So, yes, at one level, faith is quite important to him, and I think he talks about his faith as being quite important to him. But the, at another level, kind of a much lower level of abstraction, you're actually talking about nuts and bolts of the faith. No, he's not required to do that. Over time, Romney has come to grips with the fact that he is going to be asked these questions and that he needs to answer them, uh, and that his, his viability as a presidential candidate does not at least to me, seem to have been undercut by his increasing embrace of a mandate to provide some level of answer. Mormons are followers of a religion founded by Joseph Smith, who reported seeing God and Jesus in the woods of western New York in the spring of 1820. Mormons view their church as a restoration of true Christianity. Mormons were persecuted throughout their early history both because of their religious beliefs and their political views. Romney's great-grandparents, who were polygamists, fled to Mexico during the period when government authorities were cracking down on polygamists. The specter of polygamy continues to haunt Mormons. HBO's popular TV series, Big Love, features a polygamous Mormon family, though the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints renounced the practice more than a century ago. There remain fringe groups that practice polygamy today and call themselves Mormons, but LDS officials say anyone practicing polygamy will be excommunicated. This religion, which was born and bred in America, is the single largest and most successful homegrown religion. It truly is unique. There are about five and a half million Mormons in the United States today and about 11 million worldwide. In the early days, people were living literally on the edge of time. They expected the, the Armageddon, the apocalypse, uh, to be just around the corner. Today, the church really is a, a much larger, more secure, more stable organization. Its basic founding period is now behind it, and it is living in and with uh, the broader society. In that sense, it's very mainstream. And we will have a chance to see whether uh, there is going to be a an opportunity to discuss the serious issues facing the United States in a very dangerous and trying time. I don't happen to believe that one of those serious issues is where I go to church on Sunday. Like John F. Kennedy before him, Romney has faced questions on whether his own church would attempt to influence his political decisions. The idea of high-ranking church officials weighing in privately on public issues with politicians from their flock is not without precedent. Deep in Romney's father's archives, is a strongly worded letter that then-Governor George Romney received in 1964 from a Mormon apostle named Delbert Stapley. The letter encouraged Romney to reconsider his views on civil rights. George Romney's response to this letter actually supports the Romney's professed respect for the separation of church and state. In the months after receiving this letter, George Romney stepped up his support for civil rights. 
the LDS Church has a, a very strict policy of you know, separation between church and state and, and doesn't tell political leaders how to vote on, on matters of public policy. Will, will there be instruction flowing from the church to this man? I think it's pretty clear that the answer is no. You, you take the oath of office. The oath of office is your highest promise to God and to the people of America. And, uh, uh, you, you know, I haven't gotten a call from the church as governor. I certainly wouldn't get a call from the church as president. And my responsibility is a secular one, and that would come first.